welcome everybody to the first edition of the online video yeah. presentation of Beer for Breakfast. You may recognize Paul Segura from the Carl Scott Brewing Company, everybody. And we have some very, very special guests here along with producer Danielle. Jeff Bagby is here, Hello. ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Bagby is here <laughs> from the Bagby Beer Company. Good to have you here, Jeff. Good to be here. Good to see you again, pal. Good to see you too. It's been a while. Melanie Pierce is here as well from the Keep Hello. a Breast Foundation. Nice to have you here, Melanie. Thanks for having us. Now, we I got to consult my notes here, but uh, this is... Sorry, this gets on camera, but we're trying the uh, Eagle Rock Red Micro Dot. Yes, we are. So what's the story with this? I mean, you guys, your office is, is near there in Eagle Rock? or um, Keep It Breast is located in East L.A., um, and it just so happens that um, Eagle Rock Brewery is the closest brewery to our office. That's and handy. Made sense. Yeah, Stumbling it distance. works out really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how did it's you on my way to and from work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Beer uh, for breakfast. <laughs> See? Beer for breakfast. So <laughs> I might go there for lunch, perhaps, or something. Um, the Red Micro Dot, how did you come across this? Um, they're actually, they made this specially for the Brewbeast Festival. Um, they made a special... I picked it up this morning at 7.30. Um, <laughs> so it's fresh. <laughs> right off the fermenter. It's super yeah. fresh. Good. Um, and it's... Uh, like a sour blonde that's been aging in red wine barrels for the last four months. Oh. And the last month it's been sitting on uh, some fresh cherries. Ah, mm. So, right. yeah, they made it um, specially for Brewbies, and they'll eventually release the batch of it, but not until after the fest. All right, I want to talk more about Brewbie Fest in a couple of moments. And by the way, we have a little bit of cash. <gasps> we do. To oh, pass along to you. okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we have some cash to pass along. I like to when you. I just show up places and people give me we money. We give you right? money, exactly. <laughs> well, producer Danielle and Abel from uh, the What's Happening blog and Beer for Breakfast did their stand up routine at the La Jolla Comedy Store. And with your help, we wound up raising some dollars for the Keeper Breast nice. Foundation. Nice. Yeah. Oh. So those are big oh. dollars. This is cash for you. But yeah, so we raised um, $130. So thank you to everyone Ooh, who came out to our, yeah. uh, to our comedy night. Yeah. So yeah. it's all Ooh. going to nice. Keeper Breast I know. Foundation. Give it up, yeah. right? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Save the boobies. Now, thank we have to make sure now that gets to the office and then yeah. you don't stop at the Eagle Rock Brewing <laughs> on the way back with that. So. Or at the taco we'll shop. Try not. Or the, yeah. <laughs> the burrito <laughs> shop. a lot of tacos. <laughs> Paul, your thoughts on the beer, pal? I love this beer, man. It's um, it's everything it's advertised to be. You get the red wine flavor. Um, you don't get a, a huge amount of oak, but that's good because it allows the cherries to come through. And it's not like face meltingly tart. It's yeah. got mm -hmm. just yeah. the yeah. right amount of tartness. I love it. Jeff, you have any experience with beers like this? I think you do. Uh, yeah, we don't particularly make anything that's tart or sour. Um, we're actually going to check out our first fruit beer venture into that realm here in a little bit but this is nice like paul said a good balance of the fruit slight tartness good character a little enough character from a wine barrel um and wood so yeah i i, I enjoyed it Very so nice. and you guys brought along uh, two beers one of which is the untarted territory yes mm -hmm. and i know <laughs> that as a brewer it's hard to go and find uh, a name that hasn't been sucked up by some other brewery someplace True. so I, there's no way when you went and put that in a Google that anybody else had that. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> my wife Dandy is amazing at coming up with names, and I'm particularly bad at it. So <laughs> she gets to take all the credit for this one for sure. Um, I I don't even know where she got it. It just came out of nowhere, and I was like, Yeah, okay, that that She's works great. She's super punny. Yeah, yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> what a great team, man. He comes up with the great beers, and she comes up with the great Gets names. Gets the names, yeah. exactly. No Google necessary. So we've got a growler of it here, uh, so we can try some of this. Let's see. This is the yeah, untarted right. over here. Right. Okay. So. Ooh. All right. Oh, Ooh. there we go. We'll just, we'll just start pouring them. Oh, yeah. Sweet. So are all of the Ruby Fest beers pink? Is that <laughs> not all of them? No, okay. But um, so that was not a requirement. It's not necessarily a requirement. Mm -hmm. I do ask that people either bring something pink or mm -hmm. something just cool and fun that people aren't going to be able to just you know buy off the shelf yeah. wherever they see it. Um, kind of just makes it more fun for the festival goers. It's a beautiful color. Yeah. Thank you. It could be a pink boots brew too, I guess. Yeah. So was this filtered? It looks really bright. It is not filtered. It's got a beautiful pink head on it, too. Mmm. Wow, it smells like it's got cinnamon in there or something. Yeah, it's yeah we'll get to that. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he works in beer or something. I don't know. Mmm. I love the nose on this. Well, cheers, you guys. Hey. Yeah. Nice job cheers. on the pours there, Jeff. Thank yeah. you. Cheers. Pink beer is galore. Cheers. cheers. 
Oh. Wow. Hmm. I could drink that all day. Wow. <laughs> so I just you guys don't right make these kinds of beers very often. This is delicious. This is our first and only. Um, yeah, we make fairly traditional, more classic style beers at Bagby Beer Company. So this was uncharted territory mm. for us, if you will. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we had a Belgian blonde beer sitting in the fermenter. Um, wasn't completely happy with the way that it came out. And we were kind of joking around in the brewery. We're like, oh, let's throw some fruit in it. Let's see. What the, let's let's try that. So back and forth with some some friends, some conversations about adding fruit to beer. Um, like the name suggests, we didn't want a sour component. We didn't want a mixed fermentation component. We just wanted fruit in the beer. Um, it was actually released or came out um, kind of around the holidays. So we, um, we did make sort of a big cinnamon tea and um and added oh. that to it as well we kind of like that that um component the beer the the slight very very slight tartness you get is from cranberry there's actually mm -hmm. the fruit that went in 70 percent of the fruit that went in is cranberry and 30 percent of it uh, of it is cherry and so you got a little bit of that cranberry tartness kind of character mm -hmm. and then we wanted to balance this the uh Cherries with some cinnamon because they're kind of a great combination. Yeah, so. I gotta say this tastes vaguely holiday-like. Mm -hmm. If we were drinking this, totally. you mm -hmm. know, in yeah. early December, this would be like the holiday beer. But it's not. Mm. It's the Uncharted territory. Yeah, it almost sounds like you were like, well, like let's see what a, what random things <laughs> we can throw in. Like let's throw this in. What does it say? He's like, all right, like let's throw this in. I usually do that after a long night of drinking. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, the taco <laughs> shop. Let's throw this in there and this in there. So. Uh, a little bit. Good. That'll be good. Throw that in. Believe it or not, it was calculated. Everything that we did was measured, and and yeah, the the experiment part of it was just the fruit period because mm -hmm. we don't really work with fruit at all. So, yeah, it was a fun beer. It, it's uh it's been going well. It's not it's not a hugely sweet beer, which I didn't want. Mm -hmm. It's it uh, is really light in alcohol, so you can have a couple and not have to worry about it. And I think it's got a, a r wide range of flavors. You do get a little bit of the base Belgian yeast character to it and also the cranberry cherry and the cinnamon character that's in there. Uh, Jeff, a question for you and question for you too, Paul. The 4.5% ABV, would mm -hmm. you say that's about ballpark for this kind of a beer? Or can these beers be fattened out to have a larger alcohol content? It, I'd say it depends you know, on the style and the aging process and the beer that you're starting with. Um, I think a lot of f basic fruit beers, um, yeah, they're probably around that four to five and a half, six mm -hmm. percent range, maybe. But there's a ton that are way beyond that too, so it's kind of hard to say. Paul, yeah, I think it's you know subjective. It's all you know, I th I'm a big fan of giving the brewers benefit of the doubt as to what they wanted to make. But like this could easily, if you doubled it in strength, be like a good Christmas beer, mm -hmm. um, like a wassail or something, a spiced you know Christmas ale or something. Um, but I like it the way it is. It's super drinkable. There's like layers of complexity in there. Yeah, each, each time you take a sip, you get something you didn't get the previous sip, <laughs> <laughs> and it just keeps coming, man. Yeah, yeah that's what we like. It gets even better. Yeah, yeah. Do a delicate beer with lighter flavors instead of those bang you over the head kind of <laughs> flavors. So I always like to eat with my beer. What mm -hmm. would you pair this with? Like, what would go really well? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't paired it with anything yet, so I'm on the spot a tad here. Burritos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, everything was a burrito. Yeah. Um, look, did you have some? I'm thinking <laughs> of like a fruit salad with mm -hmm. some like mandarin oranges and some dried cranberries or something in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, obviously, it would probably go well with some some... Not heavy desserts, but some desserts that have more of a mild, like a, they have a fruit character in mm -hmm. them of some kind. They're not heavy chocolate or anything like that yeah. would be good. Um, I also think, oddly enough, which popped in my mind was red meat, um, mm -hmm. like well, a, a lighter that? seasoned carne asada or something like that mm -hmm. that's not super mm -hmm. spicy, oh. <laughs> but at the same time has that that sweet note in the, in the cinnamon in there, I think would really complement well with some red meat. Melanie, Thanks. what would you try this with? Um, I instantly thought of like those, like powdery cinnamon donuts. Yes. It is still it. like yeah. breakfast time, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. I can I'll see, see that. that. I'm ready for that right now. Oh. Yeah. yeah. From burritos to Entenmann's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some like creme so brulee. <laughs> uh. Now the, you know, we have another beer that is uh, a Belgian style, and I love that it's called um, 
Amite? Yeah, Amite. At the, uh, Amity. Yeah, the last part of it is kind of if you think of T J E, like J, like. Je. Yeah. Like a je. Amite. It's French. You probably be French. French. <laughs> Bien sûr. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it means friendship. Um, it when we first made the beer, we didn't know what we were going to call it, like pretty much all of our beers. And when the beer came out and we tasted it, it really reminded uh, my wife and I of a lot of beers that we've had in Belgium with a lot of our friends and a lot of the breweries that are there. So going on that, we took it to um, how a lot of them, when they send an email, will sign off with that word. Oh, yeah. With an S on the end. Oh. means like kind regards or sincerely or, you know, friendships. Um, so we just took it and made friendship. Well, so. Let's fire up some of this. Exactly. All right. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Got a get rid of the tartar I, I know. Guess. <laughs> oh boy we got to empty Bottom our glassware <laughs> it's a race dun, dun, dun. <laughs> i did it mm. i'm gonna stick the growler out there so everybody can see bagby brewing company oh. or bagby beer oh. company uh, yeah where is bagby it's <laughs> up in oceanside right yeah we're on south coast highway in okay. oceanside just a few blocks south of well the train station like mel took and met us today um, uh, about five blocks down from downtown Oceanside there. Okay, very nice. Which is a great point, right? If you're going to Brewbies, take the train up there. It's like Definitely. 10 minutes of walk station or walking from the station. Yeah. Safety first. Yeah. Right. No drinking yeah. and driving. If you celebrate, don't take navigate. The you can take the right by that diner place. The place we had oh, the burrito the tour Street at. Cafe. The Hill Street Cafe. The Hill Street Cafe, yeah. Hill Street, yeah, is, a, is kind of kitty corner. Yeah. yeah, we did a burrito tour there. Uh, oh, really? Leo from Pepper is a huge fan. He lives like right over there. Cool. So, and he like even pointed out, he's like, yeah, Bagby. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, nice. it was a great place. They were super nice, and it's right down the street from your location. Yep. Now, how long have you been there now? We're almost two and a half years. So we're still young. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe it's been two and a half years already. <laughs> so mm. We get that. <laughs> no, we do. We get a lot of people like, "Oh, you guys have been around for like four years, haven't you?" I'm like, nowhere near. <laughs> well, we have been doing events there for four years. True. True. <laughs> yeah, we what did rubies in did a Rubies very there. rainy, rainy, rainy. Four rainy, years ago, when it was day. just a parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Construction <laughs> site yeah. and parking lot. It used to be an site. auto dealership or something, didn't mm -hmm. it? Correct. It was a BMW Saab dealership. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, Somebody you know, Saab. <laughs> the view of the yeah. sunset from the second floor, man, oh. and that upstairs bar there is pretty special. Mm. It's pretty cool. Pretty Cheers, cool you hand. guys. Cheers. 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 Great having you guys here. Great having you guys here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. First thoughts on this? That wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got it's got like just <coughs> the right. So when I think of Belgians, I think of the funk, and so I feel like it has just the right amount of funk to it behind it. It's not like overly Belgian-y where it's you know like too much. Like it's got a really good balance. Mm. And then it just gives way to the hops, doesn't it? Like yes. the hops just take over. Mm -hmm. It's like bam. Mm. It doesn't smell super hoppy, but as soon as you taste it, you get all that hop flavor. So what's the story with Bruby Fest this year? Give us the lowdown, Melanie. Oh, yeah. Brewbies <laughs> Fest coming up next weekend, um, February 11th. We always do Brewbies the Saturday before Valentine's Day because we love boobies. <laughs> <laughs> we love love. Um, it'll be at Bagby Beer in Oceanside. Um, there's still tickets on sale. The Fest is from 1 to 5. And um, we'll have about, <clears throat> I think we'll have about 40 breweries on site and probably 40? like 40 on site. And then we'll have about... 10 or so breweries on a tap trailer that are from out of town or can't make it to the to the fest the day of so and the eagle rock folks will be there they will be there yeah there we go with some of the uh well what uh the red micro dot yes <laughs> yeah yes so how many, how many years have been doing ruby's fest now this is the eighth year and last year we actually expanded the fest and started doing it in san francisco also Great. so that'll be in april at faction but now, just for folks who are not familiar with uh, the Keep a Breast Foundation, just give us a quick lowdown as to what you guys do. Um, Keep a Breast is a breast cancer nonprofit. Um, they originally started in San Diego, which is how I was introduced to them. You're still um, 760. Still 760, <laughs> even though I live in L.A. <laughs> um, and um, Keep a Breast focuses really on cancer prevention and s breast health education. So in the big sort of arena of breast cancer nonprofits, we're more of prevention versus the cure. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's gotta be a balance, right? So mm -hmm. we're, um, 
our demographic is very young. It's like 14 to 25 in that age. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, we go out and we talk to people and like to educate them one-on-one -on, -one on ways to lower their risk. Well, that's great. And yeah. you guys are doing a great job getting the word out with uh, these wristbands and otherwise. They work. And thank you so much <laughs> for our help. For they do they do work. Yes. We, uh, people were in them at uh, the comedy store the other night for 91X mm -hmm. Comedy Night. Yeah. So you guys do a great job as far as the awareness is concerned. So thank you. Kudos on that. And cheers Thanks. to you guys. Cheers. Yeah. Yes. I'll cheers to awesome. that. Yeah. 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 Hey. And the boobies. Yeah. The boobies. The boobies man. And beer. Yeah, boobies and beer. What more do you need? That's it. <laughs> that's all you need. Paul, burritos. Any last? <laughs> <laughs> you, a woman uh, after my heart right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> boobies, beer, I'm burritos. Started. Paul, any last thoughts on, on the Big beer fan pal? of uh, boobies. Oh, and beer. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, anytime you can, uh, you know, combine the two f and, and do some good, uh, you know, for society. And, you know, the women behind the boobies. Um, yeah, awesome. Come on out, everybody. <laughs> 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 and when's that happening one more time? Mm. It's Saturday, February 11th. Saturday, February at 11th. At Bagby Beer. And you can get tickets at brubies.org. Brubies.org, mm. everyone. All right, so real quickly, we've got to say thanks to our friends at Keg and Bottle. Paul, Keg and Bottle, everybody. <laughs> beer for breakfast, supported by Keg and Bottle. Free two-hour delivery available on beer, wine, and spirits through Amazon Prime Now. Customers can shop at primenow.com. That's primenow.com. You and you and you need to go to primenow.com or download the Prime Now mobile app to use the service. Where was that? <laughs> Uh, primenow.com <laughs> or or Jeff go to kegandbottle.com keg the letter n bottle.com one more time Paul come on beer yes beer for breakfast everybody <laughs> get having a beer <laughs> we've got more to come just go to 91x.com to check out the entire beer for breakfast archives thank you very much Melanie thank you very much Jeff thank make you. sure you check out Brewbies Fest on February the 11th it's going to be a great time more to come on 91x online <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Can I breathe now? <laughs> <laughs>